What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to GMod's World Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the Sunday games, November 19th, 2023. We're going to kick it off with the Dog Pound and the Steelers. Now, we all know at this point, Kenny Pickett is garbage. Like, we know that offensively, you're not going to win games with the Steelers. Everybody knows that, right? But what we didn't know is that the Browns are actually winning games that we didn't see them win last year. We all know that their defense is stout, right? We know they have a really good defense and they can stay with any team. But the problem is been putting up points. Now, whoever this QB is, Thompson, he was able to do that when it was necessary, okay? They at least got a touchdown, uh, you know, putting people in position to do stuff. He is not the reason behind, you know, what actually transpired with the touchdown, but he had the one interception, 165 yards. But every one of those yards that he threw for had some kind of meaning, right? All you have to do is put this team in a proper situation to make a field goal to win the game. Because they're literally a defensive-minded team that will take any player, any coach, whatever their strategy is, it doesn't matter. When they get on the field with the Browns, the Browns play very, very good defense. So you deserve a dog pound if you're a Browns, uh, you know, a Browns fan today. The Steelers, I don't know what they deserve. I, I don't know what they're doing. Like, I don't know exactly what's happening, but I will tell you this. They are six and four. So it's not like they're completely out of it, but I have to give Tomlin a lot of credit. For a team that cannot score the football on a regular basis, six and four is pretty good in that division. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. That That's really actually good. So he deserves a lot of credit, but you don't give credit when dudes are losing, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Warren, the running back, 129 yards, nine carries, a touchdown. Definitely helped the Steelers out a lot, but you got to be able to do more offensively. And that's ultimately what that came down to. The Bears and the Lions. The one thing that I want to say, Jared Goff is legally blind in both, out, in both eyes. But the bottom line is that the Lions are a very resilient team. If you can go out there and just start throwing three Stevies for no reason at all, just straight blind reads and still win, the, bro, it, it's something that's being cooked up in Detroit, man. Something is being cooked up in Detroit, and I know they beat the Bears, but Justin Fields, honestly, he came out really, really good. You know what I'm saying? I know it was 14-10 at the half lines and all that stuff, and then all of a sudden the Bears went up, and then, you know, they scored 17 points in the fourth. If you give up 17 points in any quarter, and for some reason, like, you only, you know, obviously the other team is not scoring as much, 17 is a lot of points in one quarter. I don't know how that happened. You know, obviously I was watching the game and several others at the same time, but this is really, really nasty. And, um, you know, moving forward, we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do about Jared Goff because if you throw three interceptions in the playoffs, you're going home. The Chargers and the Packers. Jordan Love, bro. Listen, I got to be honest. I don't know exactly what we, what is that guy? Because this was a really, really good game by him. Is this what we're going to ultimately get once he fine tunes his interceptions at the end of the game that usually go back for pick sixes? Or is it going to be a guy that just, you know, randomly has a good game here and then sucks there? Now, I do want to give Justin Herbert less slack that, you know, you know, a little bit. He, dude, he threw a perfect pass. OK, there's been debate about Quentin Johnson. You know, maybe the ball wasn't thrown perfectly. There's no excuse about that drop. The Bolt should have won this game. Instead, the, Char the Chargers dropped to the Packers in a game that I think most people kind of favor the Chargers. Now, I don't really believe in Justin Herbert, but that throw was good enough for them to win the game. So you have to be fair. And I saw a lot of people ripping through him for other things that he did during the game. The NFL comes down usually to one play. And I know they're like, yo, you had the whole game. You know, that doesn't decide it. It actually does. In games like this, where if that guy catches the ball, they win the game, it actually does decide it. So you need to make that catch. Now, I don't know what they're going to do uh, with Quentin Johnson. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I would not want him on my team. OK, and I understand, like, it's not like he's like a major star player. He's a guy that has to go out there and earn his check. You know what I'm saying, bro? He's not Keenan Allen. He doesn't have the history of being clutch. He don't have all that stuff. You can't drop that ball. I'm disgusted. I'm also disgusted with Justin Herbert because it's another loss, but I can't put this on him entirely. OK, I, I just can't do that. I will tell you this about uh, Jordan Love, though. I like what I saw. Very, very intuitive win. Okay, 322 two touchdowns. Look, you can't look, bro. Hey, Packer fans, you got to take that. All right, that's just what it is. Kenny Clark with the deflection at the end sealed the game. So some people might blame Justin Herbert for that, not being able to get the ball down the field. But again, that drop, that was the deciding factor of the game. 
I don't care. At the end, like if you keep it close and at the end, an idiot drops the ball, it's on the idiot. Raiders and the Dolphins, I want to first say, Antonio Pierce, he has this team fighting. This Las Vegas Raiders team is fighting now, all right? The Dolphins were a little bit too much at the end. You know, Tyreek Hill, 10 receptions, 146 yards. Raheem Mostert, 86 yards on 22 carries. Tua turned the ball over, 325, two touchdowns, one interception. The Raiders could have won this game. The throw at the end by O'Connell, Jalen Ramsey just read that so well, and um, it was just a beautiful interception. But like I said, at the end of the day, the Dolphins do beat teams that are either 500 or under 500. So there's nothing exciting about this win. And we're just going to keep on moving on. The Giants and the Commanders. I don't know what the Giants are doing. I thought they were actually tanking. I don't know exactly what the deal is, but winning this game was kind of stupid. But I guess, you know what it is? The Giants are going to do what the Giants are going to do anyway. And regardless, they're going to make a decision that doesn't make any sense, like drafting Daniel Jones. Even if you give them the number one pick, they'll probably draft a punter. Very, very stupid uh, front office there. But the commanders, Sam Howell, people were expecting him to show out. He did show out with three interceptions. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, that dude sucks. But is it about that? Yes. The Washington commanders, last week and the week before, we were talking about, you know, Sam Howell possibly being, you know, the franchise QB. He sucks, dude. Because the Giants don't really play good defense. So there's no excuse for him to have three interceptions. And again... I know it's a division game. I know you guys are going to remind me about that. I understand that. But there is no excuse for, bro, three interceptions against the Giants defense. I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. The Cowboys, 33-10, to 10, they beat the hell out of the Panthers. Like I always say, if you want to get beat on, just be an average team. The Cowboys will beat the hell. They are so good at beating trash teams. I, dude, I don't know anybody that does it better, bro. I have no idea about anybody that does it better. Dak Prescott didn't even throw it 200 yards. 189 and two touchdowns. That was it. They beat the hell. Dude, they just destroy, destroy completely average and below average teams. When they play a team with their competition level, they're going to lose. Shout out to Jimmy Johnson for going into the, uh, he'll be going into the Cowboys Hall of Fame. Well, the Ring of Honor, uh, finally, uh, Jerry Jones has finally become a man and accepted it. I think what he's trying to do is break the curse. Uh, from the Cowboys to allow them to possibly win the play, you know, win in the playoffs. So we'll see what happens with that. But congratulations, Cowboy fans. He was a big part of your legacy. The Titans and the Jaguars. The Titans are terrible. And I've been saying that forever. I'm not surprised about this in any form or fashion. I the, the Titans are such a trash damn team. I don't even know what they're doing. Trevor Lawrence, again, what is he gonna do? What is his team gonna be in the playoffs? Who knows, dude? Could they get a win? Possibly. I don't know. Ridley's been going crazy. 103 yards, seven receptions, two touchdowns. ETN, you know, he had 14 carries, 52 yards. Trevor Lawrence, 262 and a touchdown. But the Jaguars, dude, again, I don't really know what they are. Because when I watch them, I usually see them losing, although they're seven and three. But, dude, nothing about that team excites me. Like, obviously, it's just like, yo, I know they're not going to win anything. So it's like, all right, I'm good. I'll watch them and see what's happening. But, I haven't really liked the Jaguars since, uh, you know, Ramsey left. When when he was there, they had a good defense. Things were going really well. Um, I don't really know what's going on there right now. Got to be honest, bros. Cardinals and the Texans. Um, hmm. Seems that CJ Stroud is him. Uh, dude, listen, they're six and four. Don't look now, bro, but they might be able to win a playoff game. And I know it sounds weird, but when you look at the way that he's winning, he did have three interceptions. I don't know what it was with three interceptions on, on this Sunday, but everybody wanted to throw three interceptions. Like, it's weird, right? Like, everybody had the same amount of interceptions. What the hell are they doing? Who knows what's going on? It's all a weird situation. The bottom line is, the Texans are pretty good, okay? And I have to be honest, CJ Stroud, I, dude, I, he got to get some kind of award. And whether it's Rookie of the Year, like, dude, he keep playing like this. Like, bruh, I, again, things sometimes work itself out. We at one point thought that Deshaun Watson was going to be the next level uh, quarterback for the Texans. He obviously loves massages to the point where he can't control himself. And now look what happens. Somebody's watching down on the Texans because this guy, he's probably going to be running Texas soon. You know what I'm saying? How many of you guys take Dak over CJ Stroud right now, even as a rookie? I'm not going to, I'm not going to wait to see what the answers are. The Cardinals suck. We all know that. Let's not even worry about it. Let's keep it moving. Buccaneers and the Niners. The Buccaneers fought hard, but guess what, dude? You got Baker Mayfield. That's the look, that's the difference in the game. You got Baker Mayfield, all right, bro? 
Brock Purdy has his players. When Brock Purdy has McCaffrey, he has Brandon Ayuk, he has all these other guys, he has Debo Samuel. When he has his linemen, bro, Niners are very, very tough to beat. This is nothing to write home about. The Buccaneers should not even have four wins. Let's just be honest about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just understand exactly what's going on and just be realistic about the whole situation. Okay? That's ultimately where it is. So, the Niners winning this game is nothing to write home about. The Buccaneers suck, and we got to keep it moving. Jets and the Bills. The Jets are terrible, which is why Zach Wilson was benched. Hopefully, he stays there, dude. Because I just believe that anybody else that plays, that's on a team, even if the punter plays quarterback, is going to be a better Jets team. Until Aaron Rodgers can possibly come back, if they are in contention, and they just go from there. But the AFC East is a hot mess. Even with Miami. Because Miami couldn't beat the Bills, and the Bills suck. But the Bills completely dominated this game from start to finish. It is what it is. Um... You know, 32 to 6. The Jets are an embarrassment to themselves, the organization, and their families. We'll see how it works out later if Aaron Rodgers, if it makes sense for him to come back. But even in this game right here, the defense didn't do what it usually does. But Zach Wilson was so bad, you can't even argue it. It's like that stupid uh, with the way the Jets organization is. And Saleh has to make a decision. I would just bench Zach Wilson. It's, it's simple. What's the worst that could happen? He's a terrible quarterback. And, you know, is, is it his fault? Yes. You know what I'm saying, bro? But, like, look, it is what it is. Seahawks and the Rams. The Rams pulled it out, man. I want to tell you something about the Rams, right? I told you this from the beginning, right? They're, like, there's something about that team where they're just going to be winning random games, and we're not going to know why. This was a prime example. Because it looked like the Seahawks had control of this game early on. 13-7 at the half, but you got Geno Smith, a.k.a. the raccoon, dude. That dude sucks. And, again... There are going to be things that he's going to do where you're going to be like, yo, what? who is that? Like, you know, you ever be watching a game and you're like, yo, who is that guy? Like, you really want to know, like, who that guy is because he sucks? That's Geno Smith. But again, it doesn't really matter. Will they be able to do anything to make the playoffs? I believe the Seahawks will make the playoffs. I do believe that they will lose in the playoffs immediately. Like, bro, post haste. Very, very fast. I do not trust Geno Smith. The Rams, on the other hand, who knows what's going to happen with that team, dude? Nothing is really expected for, you know, I, I don't know. Do you expect them to do anything? Nobody really expects anything from them, so it's not like you're going to take something from them because there's nothing expected. So it is what it is. And uh, ultimately, uh, the Seahawks should make the playoffs, but I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of goes upside down in that division. The Vikings and the Broncos, our final game of the night. Now, let's just go ahead and point some things out, right? 10-9 at the half. Very boring game. It sucked. Russell Wilson, 259 and a touchdown. The only thing exciting about this is when they pan to Sierra. It is what it is. This guy was somehow able to pull out this win. I don't know how he did it. He threw the ball into coverage. And, yo, look, listen, dude's coming out with the ball. You know what I'm saying? When Sutton's going to go up there and just get that thing, the big receivers are a major, major impact. I do want to shout out Madison, the running back for the Minnesota Vikings, though. He was really, really good. And, um, you know, he deserves some credit about everything that went down in the game itself. But the Broncos are now five and five, all right? After starting off really, really slow, they're five and five. Again, will this continue? I don't know. Do I trust the Bronco Broncos? No, I don't. I think they suck. But look, what does it matter what I think if they're winning, dude? They're not, look, bro, let me, Sean Payton, without Drew Brees, dude, I, I don't, like I said, I would be shocked if the Broncos make the playoffs. Shocked, completely. I don't know what, the, I don't care how they're turning around, how they're winning games. Their defense is pretty tough though, but I really don't know ultimately what's going to happen. We do have to make a decision. We're going to figure it out together and try to, you know, see exactly what's going on going forward. But ultimately, I don't really see how the Broncos make the playoffs. The Vikings, okay, Dobbs, Josh, Joshua Dobbs, he's a very interesting story, but he's also a bum, okay? And people have to understand that, like, you don't just get drafted from one team and get thrown all around the league and then you're a good you know you're a good player. Like that very, very rarely happens. He made some really, really bad plays. And honestly, he should have had a lot more interceptions than he actually had. He sucks, dude. So I love the story. I love that the NFL is based on, you know, things like that. But obviously, you know, he's not that guy. You know what I'm saying? He might be able to play his way into a backup position, but I don't see him being you know, what people think he's going to be. Again, very, very interesting story, but the Vikings ultimately should have won this game. A couple bad reads from Dobbs, that was it. 
You know, ultimately that's what it came down to for me. He gave the he gave the Broncos opportunities that they otherwise shouldn't have had. And that's what, you know, I got from the game. Let me know what you guys think about it. But the Vikings could possibly still make the playoffs because this league is crazy. It is what it is. But I will say this again. Dob sucks, bro. But look, you guys have a good day. I'm going to see you guys very, very soon. Enjoy it. Remember, you could download this podcast for free. iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, G Myers World Podcast. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. Enjoy your day. One love, y'all.